Thank you guys for joining in. I'm really excited to have you all here. I miss seeing your faces and hearing your voices. It's nice to see some of you on the video. Um, it's great. So uh, yeah, just a couple housekeeping things to take care of before we get started. Um, hopefully by now you've gotten comfortable with Zoom. I'm apparently not super comfortable, <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go on. So um, yeah, if you, again, I said earlier, um, if you have any questions during this presentation uh, or at the end, if you can use the chat function, um, you can access the chat function. It's probably at the bottom of your screen. It's probably just as chat. Um, so yeah, if you want to uh, chime in at any point in time, go ahead and write it down there. And then Eric's gonna be um, taking note of all of those and we'll um, address them at the end. Um, and maybe at the end, yeah, if, we, if, we, uh, if it's not too complicated, uh, we'll be able to maybe hear some of you guys chime in um for real so okay and what else should i cover so yeah this is uh obviously our first go around so um if you have any feedback or any um uh comments uh that'd be super great to hear you can uh go ahead and do that via email at the can tv at training or training at can .org. um if you could that'd be cool uh, also, again, you don't need to have necessarily your video or your audio on for this presentation. Um, we're going to field most of your questions through the chat, um, although it is nice to see some of your faces, so I do appreciate it. Um, also, just so you guys know, uh, next week Eric will be um, hosting his field camera optics um, training uh, session, if you guys want to join in on that. I know a majority of you uh, RSVP'd for both. Uh, which is awesome. So yeah, that one should be good. All right, a couple other things that I want you guys to know. Um, you can still submit your content uh, to Can TV. You can still do that. Um, I know probably a good chunk of you probably already are or have in the past, so just know that that's still um, an option. Uh, for those of you that haven't, you can get some um, info on how to start doing that at this link here. Um, and then if you uh, are ready to get started or you have questions, you can go ahead and contact traffic at cantv.org um, and they can help you out. All right, and then also, uh, yes, we are still technically closed, but you can still stay up to date as far as, you know, when we might open again or what we have going on um, at all of our social media outlets here. So go ahead and check those out. Um, and then also, uh, I'm gonna have some resources and links that you guys will be able to um, access after this is done. Um, and that will be, I'll probably try to shoot you guys an email all at the end. And also I'm gonna be planning on, um, we'll put it up as a blog post at this link here, kintv.org slash news. All right, okay, so let's get cracking. So yeah, what I wanted to talk about today uh, was developing an idea and writing a treatment. Um, this step in the process of creating uh, whatever kind of videos or content that you want to make, um, I find to be both the most daunting, but the most exciting. Um, this is definitely the, the two things that uh, if you get this down well, if you start off with a solid idea in a solid treatment, um, then it's going to be uh, real easy. Things will really start to fall into place after that. So uh, the more time you spend here, then um, the easier things will be down the line. All right, so what do we mean by developing an idea or what is an idea? So uh, here I, I'd say that an idea can be a lot of things um, and they're all good. <laughs> Even a bad idea is good. Uh, and I say that because you know, an idea is really uh, just the nugget, just the beginnings of what your project turns into. Um, I think it's, it's easy for a lot of people to have an idea or a thought and think that, okay, well then I'll just go off of that. Um, but really there's a lot that needs to be built upon um, in order to create a, a piece of work that's actually going to engage with people um, and actually turn out to be something that you really want uh, to share. All right, so as good as ideas can be, it doesn't really mean much if you don't do anything about it. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you guys have probably uh, come across plenty of people or maybe you've been that person just talking with friends being like hey I got this great idea and then if they ask you you know one or two questions and you have no answer for them then you're like okay maybe this is really just a thought and not quite an idea just yet 
all right? So that means you got to nurture your idea. That means you have to help it grow, turn it into something bigger than what it currently is already. Um, this is what I really think is the hardest part, um, is developing the idea, is turning it into something broader than just a thought. Um, this is something that might come easier for some projects than others. You know, you might spend maybe a week developing an idea or a month and a half or years developing another. Uh, it really just depends on what the project is. Um, so that's not something that has a straightforward answer. Um, developing the idea is definitely something that is kind of a <laughs> fluffy concept, I would say. That means you know, there's no concrete right or wrong ways. Um, this is just me trying to kind of help you out as far as um, getting, your, getting your thoughts in order. All right. So yeah, what, what does it mean to develop an idea? That means you start to think critically about your idea. Um, and that means you have to start asking yourself uh, some questions. So um, a couple of questions that I have here is, um, is it feasible? And that's something that we'll talk about a little bit in a second. Um, does it make you excited? So that's really important if, um, you know, this idea might be something that you end up living with for a long period of time. Uh, so you better be wanting to do it because it might take a long time and you might get sick of it. But um, as long as you know that you really are excited about it and you can sustain that excitement, then your project's going to work out great. Um, has it been done before? So that's, you know, if the answer is yes, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do it. Um, that would just mean you need to think a little differently about how you can make your idea uh, unique from something else that already exists. Uh, can someone help me do it? Uh, I'm sure if you guys have taken any of our classes, you know that um, we really do encourage you to uh, use the people around you um, and help the people around you as well. So you really can't make any content, any work of any real merit without the help of people around you. All right, so um, this is something that I think is really important that you think about when you have an idea, is that ideas can come from different places. Um, nobody has a co you know, complete concept for a show or a film or a documentary um, just pop into their heads. Usually it's a small thing, uh, and usually it's one thing. You know, maybe you have an idea for a, a character that you kind of think of, or maybe you um, have an idea for an event uh, or a place, um, or maybe you, you know, are interested in a real person. Uh, each of these ideas are good, good things to start, um, but they not, are not in and of themselves enough to create a project. Um, by that I mean, you know, this, this first one here that I have, technique or effect. You know, I think um, something like, say, you have a drone and you want to make a videos with your drone. Um, that's cool, but that's not necessarily a complete concept, you know, that's just piece of something. If you're saying, hey, I want to make some sort of drone video um, during, well, you know, maybe some sort of fair that, hap that could happen in the distant future, or maybe you want to do some, um, you know, tour of some sort of park. Uh, and, and those are all in support of some sort of idea or theory or belief that you want to convey to people. Those are three different things that are um, you know, relevant and uh, all together create a concept, if that makes sense. You know, I want you to really think about um, all the things that kind of branch out from your initial idea. So yeah, so a project can be any of these, these things, but it can't be only one of them. So that's, that's something that I think is really important. All right. So uh, yeah, enough of that fluffy stuff. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, so yeah, is it feasible? So I said that earlier, that's a really big question you have to ask yourself. Um, this is a question that I think is really important for first time producers. Um, you know, that we have a lot of people coming in through our classes that have these great grand uh, ideas that they really wanna do immediately. And usually we encourage you to start small uh, because starting small usually means that it is feasible. It can be done. Um, and then from there, you can uh, start to, um, you know, branch out and make something larger. Uh, so a couple things to think about when you're um, figuring out if something is feasible is, one, do you have the resources? Uh, so the resources can be budget, uh, access to equipment, 
um, having a crew put together. Uh, maybe you need to have an actor. Maybe you need to have a guest on your show. Uh, maybe you need to have a location. Um, now, you know, perhaps you run into some roadblocks, um, you know, in f at first when you are going through this list. You know, maybe you're like, well, I want my show to take place on a spaceship. I don't have a spaceship, so I guess I can't do my show. Um, you know, that's where you need to start thinking creatively. How can I, you know, convey the idea of a spaceship? Um, that's, that's kind of where the creativity part of developing your idea really does come into play. Because um, usually if your first idea doesn't uh, pan out, um, sometimes you kind of end up stumbling upon something else that's possibly better than what you thought of in the first place. Um, those are great happy accidents. They do happen probably more uh, than you think. Um, and it's, it's all, that's always nice when that happens. So the other thing that I want you to think about as far as is something feasible um, is, is it a story? That means like, are you, do you have a beginning, middle and end? Um, are you trying to convey some sort of belief or idea? Um, if so, how and why? Uh, does your story make sense? Um, that's something that I think you need to, yes, go over with yourself, but that's something that you also need to share with other people. Um, getting feedback is super crucial at every stage. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, also, I want you guys to keep in mind that uh, having a beginning, middle, and end isn't just for, you know, your traditional narrative story arc. Uh, it's also really crucial for, say, any sort of documentary work you want to do. Um, a talk show, that's still important. Uh, a PSA, all those things still have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And those should be um, easy for the viewer to see or understand. All right, so writing a treatment. Um, so what is a treatment? So a treatment is just a physical written document that uh, just kind of creates a real quick overarching idea of what your project proposal is. It's like a proposal, um, if you've ever written something like that before. Uh, so um, a treatment is really important because not only does it help you convince others to participate in your project, um, it's also really important to prove your, to yourself that your idea is in fact viable. Um, when you're writing a treatment, uh, I would say definitely take your time. This is the one point in time in the production process that you can uh, take as long as you like um, because the more concrete, the more um, developed your treatment is, then the easier it's going to be, again, for you to go through your production and your post-production process without any issues. Um, so yeah, so let's start talking about the elements. Uh, the next thing that I really want you to consider is <laughs> no matter what project you do, um, you're going to need to do some level of research. And that might be, you know, obviously if you're doing something that's nonfiction or educational, um, obviously research is inherently a part of that process. But even when you're doing something that is maybe more narrative, more fiction based, um, you definitely need to do your research. And that research includes, again, like earlier, making sure um, you're not just completely uh, doing somebody else's idea. Uh, but it also kind of helps you get an idea of what else is out there, uh, maybe helps you think a little differently about your own idea. Um, so research, I think, is really crucial. That being said, I don't want you to go through the research phase and then end up just kind of, um, you know, you should use that information and turn it into something new as opposed to just regurgitating whatever you end up finding online. All right. So the parts of a treatment. Um, so for the most part, I would say that all of these elements that I have listed here, these are all pretty basic components of a treatment. Um, I don't think there'll be hardly any treatment that you write, no matter what it is about, that's not going to include all of these particular aspects. I'm gonna go through each of these one by one, um, and I'm gonna do my best to kind of uh, convert the ideas into whatever kind of show you make, because I know a lot of you are probably wanting to make some sort of talk show, maybe you wanna make a narrative piece, maybe you wanna do some sort of educational thing. Um, and again, all of those elements are still very much a part of this treatment, uh, no matter what it ends up being. 
All right, so title and log line. Um, so a title, uh, simple enough, it's your title. Um, just know that, you know, you don't have to be uh, tied to the, your title as soon as you put it down on paper. That's not, it's not etched in stone by any means. Um, but it really is helpful to have some sort of name to kind of just, one, to make it feel real to you. Um, and then two, to kind of make it something that when you do share this treatment with other people, it's kind of easy for them to identify it. Uh, so again, don't feel like you need to have um, a concrete uh, title just yet, um, but it is important to get something down just to get you started. Now a log line. Um, a log line is kind of like a, almost kind of like an elevator pitch for your project. It's usually just one to two sentences. It's super, super concise but it should give the reader a very clear idea of what they're getting into. Um, it should kind of be a really good concrete description of what is gonna happen in your project. So just to give you a couple examples of some log lines, these are just some log lines that I pulled off of um, IMDb uh, that has a bunch of different uh, maybe movies or TV shows. Um, I think if you read some of these, you might kind of instantly be able to recognize what the story is. Um, you know, the, a boy who communicates with spirits seeks the help of a disheartened child psychologist. Um, obviously, that's the sixth sense. Um, let's see, an insurance salesman discovers his whole life is uh, actually a reality TV show, uh, The Truman Show, that's one of my favorite movies. Um, so, you know, you see just from reading that, these are really short sentences, but you kind of know what you're getting into from the get. Um, the one, one log line here that I didn't love was the one that says, a panel of four women discusses the news and politics. Uh, that's the view. And um, I don't know, if I were you, if I read that log line, I would feel like <laughs> I wouldn't really know what I was getting into. But um, just so you know, there's, there's a lot of different versions of this. All right. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is uh, format. So format, that means what kind of, of shape your project is gonna uh, take. So um, here are a couple of examples that I have listed of different formats. Uh, some I've talked about already. Um, you know, don't necessarily feel like your idea has to be stuck to one of them. Um, I think the kind of the most creative work that I see are ones that kind of turn the idea of these formats on their head a little bit. Um, you know, you might go into your idea thinking like, okay, this is definitely a talk show for sure. And then you might say, you might, you know, find out down the line, okay, maybe it's not really a talk show. It's more of a documentary. Um, so you should really be a little fluid with your thinking uh, when you're developing your idea. Uh, so when you get to this point in time, really think critically about how you really want to convey your story, convey your message with format. Um, it really might end up changing as time goes on. All right, ta target audience. This is something that I think is uh, <laughs> incredibly crucial. I also think that a lot of people might kind of o gloss over this part, finding your target audience, but um, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to really, really think critically about who you're trying to talk to here. Um, I also want to, you know, remind you guys that, you know, when you're producing work for Can TV, um, know that you, we want you to be as niche with your target audience as you like. You know, if you're really just trying to talk to five people, that's fine. <laughs> you know, we encourage that. Um, that really is, that really does allow you to connect with people um, through, you know, cable television uh, and give representation to, to groups that typically don't get it elsewhere. So uh, really, I do encourage you to kind of get um, as, as um, niche, as narrowed in as you can. Uh, that's also gonna kind of help guide you when you start maybe writing your script or putting together interview questions or kind of developing um, more of a pre-production plan. If you have your target audience in mind, um, if you're kind of thinking about uh, writing through the lens of somebody who's going to be watching it, that's really gonna help answer a lot of questions that you have down the line. All right, so then we come to a synopsis or a plot outline. Um, again, don't think that this is just for narrative work. This is really crucial for nonfiction 
um, for uh, any sort of documentary work. It's really everything should have some sort of, again, beginning, middle, and end, no matter what. Um, so for a synopsis or a plot outline, uh, the length of this section really does depend on um, what it is you're doing. So there is no hard and fast rule. Um, so I would encourage you to just kind of um, think, I would say, you know, shorter is usually better. Uh, because again, this is a treatment, this is something you're going to give somebody that they should be able to read pretty quickly and figure out whether or not they want to be part of your project. Um, so I would encourage you to kind of be as concise as possible, but you should still give um, a pretty good idea of what the plot or the beginning, middle, and end of your piece is. Um, you know, if you're doing something like a talk show, this is where you're going to list out, you know, maybe what your different segments are going to be about. Um, if this is, if this is a treatment for, you know, a, a talk show, like a series, maybe you should start thinking about, okay, what are the kinds of things I want each episode to cover? So maybe you have some sort of monologue that you open up with. So that's your first segment, your second segment being some sort of interview with a guest. Let us know maybe what kind of questions you're going to be asking your guests, what kinds of guests you're going to have on. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but you should really be start thinking you know, a little bit more specifically about uh, what it is that you are trying to make here. Um, because if you're just going to put down, oh, I want to do a talk show, uh, that doesn't really give information for most people, you know. There's a lot of those out there. Um, and also, I want, <laughs> I do want to encourage you to think um, narratively, beginning, middle, and end, story arcs, um, you know, even documentaries still have storylines. They still have acts. Um, you, that is really how a viewer is going to engage with something. Even if you're doing some sort of news-oriented program, if you're doing some sort of um, a journalistic endeavor, whatever it is, whatever the issue or topic you're talking about should still have a beginning, a middle, and end. I can't stress it enough. All right. So the next section we're going to talk about here is uh, characters and subjects. So um, that's, you know, who, the who part of, of your who, what, when, where, and why, and how. So who is going to be in your story? Um, this means both uh, real people and characters. Um, now, when you're writing this part, really think about uh, how these characters are, um, or subjects, or actual people, are contributing to the story. And that should inform how you write your kind of character outlines. Uh, by that I mean, let's say if you have some sort of, um, maybe you're doing some sort of like animated project about a talking ant. And you're like, well, this ant's name is Jerry and he can talk um, and he really enjoys peanut butter sandwiches. Um, but if, if him liking peanut butter sandwiches have nothing to do with how the story plays out, that's not information we need. Uh, so really think a little bit more critically about okay, this character is going to fit into this story um, and I need to think about how his personality is going to reflect the plot of the film or your short film or your animated whatever. Um, and the same thing goes for non-fiction. The same thing goes for if you're planning to interview a subject, um, if you're planning to do some sort of documentary, uh, every single person who's in it, we need to know why they're relevant to the story you're trying to tell. Um, so let's say, you know, if it is somebody who's maybe like an expert that you're trying to interview on something, you know, let us know <laughs> what their credentials are. How are they an, an expert um, and why? Uh, that kind of stuff really does kind of um, give some sort of uh, credibility to your project. And I think that's really important uh, just to give people an idea who, of who they're going to be um, um, seeing in your piece. All right. So visual elements and style. Um, so this is kind of what is the mood or the tone of your project and how are you going to convey it visually? Uh, this means a couple of different things. Um, when you do something like mood, um, or, or when you're thinking about mood or you're thinking about tone, um, that really does change how you uh, choose your lighting. Maybe it's, it changes maybe what format even it takes. Um, how you edit something. I know some of you guys who are maybe in one of my editing classes, uh, you saw me show um, a version of some of the projects where um, it was edited to be like a horror film. 
um, and that's using the same, the same base elements, the same raw elements, and turn it into something different. Uh, so editing definitely has a huge um, uh, bearing on what your tone or your mood is. Um, you know, costume and wardrobe, is it a period piece? <laughs> you know, that's gonna change the mood or tone of your project. So you should definitely be keeping that stuff in mind. Um, so your setting, is it on location? Are you gonna use the studio? Um, that's something that you really do need to think about critically. Uh, that's going to change again the mood or tone of your project. If you are, um, you know, wanting to conduct an interview, uh, and maybe it's a really serious interview, maybe the, the subject is talking about something really um, serious, uh, and you want to make um, it kind of convey some sort of uh, um, uh, in depth and also like uh, personal tone then you should probably think about, okay, we should probably be setting up the cameras so it's, it seems like a nice, warm, and closed space. Uh, one, because that's gonna make your interview subject co comfortable. And two, it's also gonna inform the viewer of just being like, okay, the thing I'm looking at is really important, it's very personal, and um, I need to um, you know, get ready for that or think about that while I'm watching uh, this interview happen. All right, what is the mood or the tone of your project? How are you going to portray that orally, the sound elements of your piece? Um, I, you know, this is just as important as the visual. Uh, this is a, you know, a video audio medium. <laughs> it has both of those equally. So you should be thinking about that when you are writing your treatment. Um, and that means, you know, what kind of music maybe are you gonna um, include into your piece? Um, music has an a extreme um, effect on mood and tone. You can really change the mood and tone of your piece just on music alone. So you should really be thinking about that stuff way ahead of time um, so you're not scrambling at the end. Uh, as far as like soundscape, you know, your ambient sounds, sound effects, um, every piece that you make is going to need some sort of amount of, of sound elements like that beyond just dialogue. Um, and that stuff is all going to inform your viewer as far as what kind of piece they're looking at. Um, so you always have to keep that stuff in mind. All right, what is your goal or the rationale? Uh, this is the why of your project. Why are you doing it? Um, this is really important. Uh, this is kind of just like earlier when we were talking about um, developing the idea. Are you excited about it? Um, so the why of you're excited about it, that's really going to be filled in here. Um, I really would encourage you guys, whatever project you end up making, it should really be uh, something that only you can do um, because that's just gonna make it that much more unique uh, and that's gonna make you that much more successful. Um, I think it's something that if you kind of have some level of a personal element into the work you're creating, that's really gonna come through to anybody who watches it. Uh, that really does make a difference. Um, so you always really wanna think about you know, why, <laughs> why are you doing it? Because if you don't know why, you're probably not gonna finish. Um, and also think of this why uh, as far as like, what do you want the viewer to get from your piece? You know, when, when, the, your, when your project ends, when your video ends, what do you want the person to walk away from taking? Um, it's really important that you think about that because if, if you don't, then your piece isn't really gonna connect with anybody. Um, and that's also just going to inform, again, how you end up developing, maybe writing your script or writing out interview questions. Just figure out what you're trying to achieve here. Um, and I know that sounds easy and that sounds obvious, but it actually is, uh, it can be easy to get lost in the weeds, you know, um, not really be able to see the forest for the trees. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. Always kind of revisit with yourself, just making sure, okay, and do I have the goal of the project? in mind here? Or have I kind of gotten lost and, and um, lost my way? All right, budget. So um, this part, I think, is something when you're in the treatment phase, uh, this is going to be um, something that you're not going to have all the answers to quite yet. And that's okay. It really is important that you at least start acknowledging the existence of, uh, of what the project needs to be able to come, come to life. Um, so usually when you're, you know, when you're in the process of developing the treatment and you really are going through each of these who, what, when, where, why, and hows, um, it's gonna become pretty obvious to you down the line 
uh, of where possible costs or issues or favors you might have to ask. Um, you know, you might realize, oh, okay, I have a scene here where it has maybe six actors. Those are six people that you need to be um, aware of and take care of. Uh, you know, maybe you want to shoot on a yacht <laughs> and you don't have one. Uh, you got to figure that out. That might be, again, uh, asking a favor of, I mean, I don't know who owns a yacht, but maybe you do. Um, you know, that's, that's where you really need to start thinking about where these actual concrete things are going to come from. Um, also keeping in mind, uh, you know, equipment in, um, and, you know, that's beyond maybe what CanTV has, you know, maybe you need something beyond that. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, and also, also keep in mind that, <laughs> again, you don't necessarily have to have all the answers to these yet. Um, eventually, you know, they might kind of fall in line. Uh, but if you have if you have a good idea of where your needs are, when you share this treatment with somebody, they might end up having something that you didn't know they had. They might be able to help you out in a way that you didn't know they could. Uh, but they're not going to know that if you don't have a really concrete idea of where your needs are. Um, that also kind of helps eliminate just kind of the mystery for yourself. You know, I think perhaps when you get down the line and you're writing the treatment, it might get to feel a little big or a little scary. Uh, but it's always good to just kind of get these things written down on paper and address them one by one as opposed to just sitting there thinking, oh, geez, how am I going to do this? This is impossible. Um, it's really important to just kind of get, get these things out and list it down and address them one by one as opposed to just uh, sitting there and worrying. All right, and that brings us to constraints and contingency. So again, this the whole part of this treatment is, um, or the purpose of this treatment is to kind of just figure out where the holes are in your story and fill them in. Um, and you might not be able to fill in all those holes. There might be some unknowns that you just don't know yet. Um, and that's okay. Uh, but it is important if you are going to ask other people to buy into your project. Uh, and by buy in, I mean they maybe donate their time or their energy. Um, it's important that you let them know where the barriers might be. Um, it's also important you, for you to at least start considering what your contingency plan, what your plan B might be. Um, it's really important that you have backups on backups for a lot of your plans, especially if you have something big, like maybe, you know, your whole talk show is revolving around this one guest saying yes, and they don't show up the day of, you should definitely, definitely, definitely have a plan B, no matter what. Um, you know, things almost never turn out exactly like you hoped. So please make sure that you um, uh, really deeply consider what, what the possible issues are. Um, and, and again, that's just another thing that maybe somebody else will be able to help you with that you didn't even know they could. Uh, so yeah, as long as you address them, as long as you get them out in the air, then, uh, then that means somebody can at least help you out. Okay, so uh, here I wanted to show you some examples of some actual treatments for actual things. <laughs> Um, just to show you what the format of a treatment looks like, what the actual visuals of a treatment are. Um, the ones, these two are, you can see they're both kind of different in the way they're laid out. Uh, the one on the right is really kind of broken up very specifically, like here's the log line, here's the characters, here this, here's the synopsis. Um, and the one on the left is really organized more in a, I would almost say, conversational way. Um, it's kind of blending all those together in one to kind of give the person a full idea um, uh, kind of in one go. Uh, these are both viable ways to write a treatment. Um, and these are also things that uh, I think I'll have some resources for you to be able to um, look at on your own later. Um, but yeah, there is no, as long as you're addressing each one of these issues, there is no like complete wrong or right way to format your treatment or um, you know maybe your character section might end up being twice as long as something else it really does does just depend on what your project is so don't feel like oh well most treatments i've seen are three pages long for for your plot so i guess mine should be three pages too um, that shouldn't be how you think about it it should really be am i answering all the questions i need to for my project and if you are then that's all you need to do all right, so then hopefully that means once you get all those things squared away that you have a treatment, you have a completed treatment. 
Um, and this is really going to be kind of your your compass for the rest of your project. It's really going to help you guide your way through the rest of pre-production and production and post. Um, you know, the more well developed that your treatment is, then uh, the easier the rest of the things are going to be. Um, you might also, you know, it may happen that when you get down the line, when you get down into production and post, that you might have to end up changing some things. You might have to refer back to your treatment and things might change a little bit. Um, that's okay. As long as you kind of have your idea or your goal at the start, things are always going to be different at the end. Um, that's another thing I'm sure we've talked about in our classes before. <laughs> you kind of have three different projects every time you start one. So there's the one that you have your first idea at the start, you know, the, the thing that you imagine it to be. Then you have the thing that is happening when you're doing your production. And then there's the entirely different thing that it turns out in post. Those are always going to be three different things. Um, and I think it's important to just kind of embrace that chaos a little bit um, and just know that, you know, whatever your end piece is, nobody knew what your initial goal was, you know, except for the people who wrote your treatment or read your treatment. <laughs> but your viewer is not going to know uh, that your story actually started out being, you know, some sort of drama narrative and then it turned into some sort of um, horror film. I don't know. You know, that's just... Uh, that's just kind of how ideas kind of turn out. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so again, if, if you get down the line or if you start your pre-production process and you realize something just isn't gonna pan out or hey, maybe even better, something changes and you have an even better idea than what you had before, then you just gotta go back to your treatment and adjust it. So um, what happens after you write your treatment? You know, what's the next steps? Uh, this is kind of different depending on what uh, kind of project you're doing, you know, what the format of your project is. Um, you know, you might end up going from here to be able to start writing a script. Um, or maybe if you're doing something that's more nonfiction, this is where you're going to start trying to contact people to be uh, maybe interviewed for your documentary or, uh, you know, guests on your talk show. Um, this is where you're going to be able to, with this treatment, this is really going to be a really great um guide for you to start asking people to take part in your project you know the the more developed and concise that your treatment is the easier it is for people to say yes um, and that goes for any of these things um, it also means that you can probably start you know um, if you have a pretty large budget uh, maybe you're trying to do something that's you have some sort of you know important issue that you want to discuss um, <laughs> Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I think it's important for you to, uh, um, it'll allow you to um, uh, get kind of maybe some financial assistance from somebody um, if they can buy into your project. If somebody really cares about the thing you're trying to do, um, then they might be able to give you something that you didn't even know they would be wanting to give you uh, in the first place. Um, so yeah, so when you have this treatment, it really is going to kind of make every other step of the process that much easier. All right. Ooh. Okay, so uh, like I said earlier, I was going to have a list of resources for you guys. Um, so a couple things, I'm going to have this presentation itself uh, available to you guys. I'm also recording it, uh, so the video will be available to you guys as well. Um, but a couple things about these resources. Uh, I think the only way you can get good at writing treatments is by reading other people's <laughs> and writing your own. But um, if, uh, if you have the time, which I, I'm guessing maybe a lot of you do now, um, I would really encourage you to start reading other people's treatments. Um, it really does kind of help you get a better idea of uh, how other people do it, especially for maybe a show or a film that you've seen you know, um, if you see what their treatment is like, then you kind of get an idea of what their end project turned into. Um, and that kind of helps maybe wrap your mind around what you need to have figured out for your treatment. So uh, yeah, the first one has a bunch of links to a couple of different um, treatments. Uh, they also call them show Bibles, which I hadn't heard of before, but um, that might be some good stuff to check out. Uh, the Internet Movie Script Database, um, that's something that is actually a really fun thing to check out as well. Those are, yes, just scripts, but it still helps you understand 
uh, a little bit better of like what the pre-production process is like, um, what script writing is like, where you need to go from your treatment to a script. Um, so the Internet Movie Script Database is a really great resource. Uh, that's something that I would encourage you to maybe, um, and I have done this before and it's fun, reading the script for a movie you haven't seen and then watching it and seeing how it changes. Or maybe you'll go the other way, watch a movie and then read the script and see how that, ling how that um, visual language and audio language got transitioned from a script into an actual piece. Uh, I just think that's immensely helpful. Um, the next one, this one is called Save the Cat. Uh, so that's, uh, Save the Cat is a um, kind of a somewhat well-known uh, structure, like plot structure, um, as opposed to just like, you know, your beginning, middle, and end. Um, the Save the Cat plot structure does really break things out into multiple different pieces. Um, and this, this link just has some really good tips and tactics to think about what your story is. Uh, and again, it might seem like it's really just relevant for narrative, but I assure you it's not. It really is helpful for anything else you end up using. Um, and then this last one is just another link to some more movie treatments and outlines uh, that I just think is really helpful. Um, that website in general, that screencraft.org, is really good if you're somebody who, you know, is wanting to be uh, more of a writer, that's a really helpful resource to check out. Uh, and again, all this stuff, all these links um, will be available to you guys. Uh, I'll send you the link um, through our blog page. All right, so that's it for me. Um, I would love to see if you guys have any questions. Um, we got a good, amount, good chunk of time. I want to save at least 10 minutes at the end for questions. Um, so again, if you have any questions, go ahead. Uh, you can text them in the chat, and then me and Eric will be able to address them. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> all right, I'm looking at some of these. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I will email the link of the recording for this presentation for sure. Hey, Andrea, um, there are questions on the Google Doc sheet. Okay, I, I, great. There. All right, I'm going to get to the Google Doc sheet. Let me get out of here. All right, let's see. So I would want my organization to speak on the hardship on teenagers in low income neighborhoods. Um, as far as dealing with gun violence, will they want to explain their feelings about family members, friends and or neighbors or seeing at first hand someone that was involved in gun violence. Okay, so you're kind of seeking feedback as far as like how you're going to reach your audience, I'm guessing, um, or what's the best way to reach your audience. Uh, let's see. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's, yeah, that's a really great idea to start thinking about, you know, that has to do with your format, what, you know, what kind of shape your story is going to take place. Um, and I think I can't quite answer that question for you, um, at least not here right now. If you if you want to have a discussion uh, about your specific ideas like that, I'd be happy to do it over email. Um, I think that's a really good idea. I think knowing you have a really good uh, specific audience that you seem to be wanting to gear your work towards, and I think that's great. Um, so yeah, I I think I hope I answered your question. Let me know if I need to be more specific. Um, can we do fundraising? So yeah, so what I mean by fundraising, I know um, there are some things that we have against, you know, commercial content uh, for your shows that I um, hope you guys are still very much aware of. Um, so, but when it comes to getting uh, outside people to kind of give money to your project, that's completely fine. Um, it's up to you to kind of figure out how they're going to give that money and, and what they want in return. Because uh, again, we don't, we can't have any commercial content per se. Um, but if it's something like an organization that wants to help you out, um, that's completely fine. Uh, if you are um, trying to do some sort of like a larger base project, maybe it's a large long-term project, um, and you want to do some sort of long-term fundraising, um, I do have a good amount of experience with that, with um, trying to fundraise my own projects. And there are a lot of different, um, different outlets for you to reach, you know, uh, that's something that I think I would be happy to maybe put together a little Google Doc over. Um, that's a good idea. So yeah, you can absolutely do fundraising. That really, it is a bit of a broad term. It can mean a lot of different things. Um, but it really is, uh, one, when you're doing fundraising, maybe you just, you know, have some sort of, um, you know, 
a GoFundMe campaign or something like that where people can give to, um, and that will uh, allow you to one, develop an audience. <laughs> so if you do some sort of GoFundMe campaign, that's gonna let you know who's interested in your project. And that's really important. Um, you know, that's gonna be people who are kind of a, your built-in audience and that's great. So fundraising can actually do a couple different things uh, beyond just getting you money. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, using Indiegogo, that's great. Um, I think, what did I use? Uh, I use Kickstarter for mine, so it really does depend on what it is you're trying to do. Um, Patreon, yeah, that's a great, that's a great uh, idea, especially if you're planning on doing something long-term, if you have a series idea, um, that's a really great idea for uh, getting people to kind of continue to um, patronize your uh, project. Um, okay, so is log line the same as lead line in journalism? You know, I'm not entirely sure. I actually don't have too much. I think I would say, yeah, if lead line is like that kind of like that one sentence that goes under the headline, if that's what you're referring to, I would say it's fairly similar. Um, yeah, so that, that, sounds, that sounds about right to me. Um, yeah, I would definitely encourage you to look at more log lines. Um, again, IMDb is a great resource for that. Uh, because the more, the more concise and the more specific, <laughs> It does seem really difficult to be both concise and specific, um, but it can be done. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, let's see. Any other questions you guys have? I'd be happy to take. Uh, let me find my chat window. Let's see. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, do you need to go through IMDb Pro to find out all the info about the production costs? You know, um, yeah, I believe you do. So that I don't entirely know. Um, there are some, let's see, Candace. All right, so there are some um, resources online for developing a budget, which is beyond the scope of this talk. Um, but that might be something that'd be good for a future webinar um for budget and production costs uh i think also um keep in mind that you know something that's part of your budget might be something that's done in kind that means somebody offers up something for free you you should still if you are making like a very you know professional budget especially if maybe you're applying for a grant um usually uh if you're applying for a grant for um creative projects they definitely want to have a budget uh and that budget will include things that do have costs, even if they are done in kind by others. That means they do it as a favor. All right, let's see, anything else? What is the ideal length for a treatment? One page to be concise? Okay, yeah. I would say, again, that depends on your project. Um, typically, one to two pages, I think, is a really good start for a treatment. Um, I wouldn't, you know, it, it really does depend on what uh, you're doing if you want to make it longer. Um, but that definitely is kind of a, a good general goal to have. Um, okay, yeah, let's see. Can we do fun? Okay, cool. Um, all right, I think, I think this is it. I think that's all I got for you guys. Unless you got anything else. Um, I think, yeah, Eric, do you think that's, that's all we got as far as questions go? Mm, can't hear you, but I'm going to assume. Um, yeah, sorry. I <laughs> um, yeah, that seems to be it for questions. It's just okay. a lot of uh, effusive thanks for the presentation, which we are yeah. feeling, you know, thanks everybody. That's really nice. Yeah um yeah okay cool great well hey guys i really appreciate you guys coming through um it was really great to see all of your faces oh my gosh look at you guys uh i miss you all <laughs> um, so do keep in mind that we do have uh eric will be hosting his next week at the same time um if you're interested field camera optics should be good um he'll be actually be hosting it from the can tv room he'll be by himself in the training classroom uh, but he will be going through um, aspects of the camera with with the camera that we have at CAN that you'll be able to look at. Um, okay, I think basically, that's, yeah. 
yeah, just just to give you an idea what what you're getting into, it's um, <laughs> it's going to be about an hour and a half, so it's it's kind of long. And so I don't expect you to stick around for the whole thing, but you know, feel free to drop in and drop out. Um, and it's going to go over the basics of the camera, um, but but with principles that can apply to any camera. It's like optical principles and things dealing with light. Um, it's a little bit of a deep dive. It'll be useful for people who have taken the class already. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a review of the actual camera, but I'm going to really kind of focus on, on just concepts and, and how they might be applied on the camera. And so there's a lot of little show and tell stuff. And so it's going to be a little crazy. I don't know if it's going to go smoothly or not, but we're going to give it a good shot. You know, so I hope you guys come to that too. Great. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I think that's it. That, that's it for us guys. So um, again, if you have any other questions, then feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, all right. Well, see you guys later. Okay. Bye. <laughs>